Alright, this email I received a few days ago about the person's talking about real arts compared to sports and he wrote a pretty long message about it. I'm not gonna really say everything that he said because you know some people don't feel comfortable with their thoughts put out like that. But he's generally saying that arts, real arts should be appreciated more than sports. And a lot of the sports, you know, athletes are getting overpaid for what they do. And we should live in a world where more real artists are being supported opposed to just athletes playing games and putting limitations on their growth and things like that. I just wanted to make a video sharing my thoughts and those ideas. I completely agree with him. Um, I've never been like... I've always been more of an artist than a sport person, you know. I understand why a lot of people are, are into sports, but I think it's just overly emphasized, you know, sports over arts. And I think there's time for a change in this world where more artists are promoted opposed to just athletes, you know. You know, it's great being an athlete, but I think there's some problems associated with the individual's spiritual growth when it comes to competition, you know, and ego development. And there's something beautiful about developing yourself as an artist. You know, it develops your meditation and your spirituality, your inner peace, teaches you about life and everything, you know. But, you know, he mentioned how these athletes get millions of dollars. And they always talk about starving artists. You know, artists don't really make much money. And I just think that there should be a more of an equal balance where it just doesn't make sense where people are just playing games and then they're making millions of dollars just to play games. And if we're not even just talking about artists, we're talking about great contributors to this world, you know, even teachers out there who are doing a great job doing what they're doing and even some non-corrupted police officers or security guards or some firefighters or nurses you know doctors you know people that are really scientists you know like people that are really contributing something very important for society a lot of times they are not making millions of dollars. I mean, you look at the salary of a teacher, say they're making like $30,000 a year, $50,000 a year. Like they're not making millions, but these athletes are just play, playing games and they're making millions. And I think there's just an imbalance with the way money is being distributed to people who they're not really playing so, that much of a significant role in this world, but yet they're being overpaid for things that are insignificant. I mean, because honestly, I think a lot of these athletes that are getting played millions, I mean, even if they didn't exist, it really wouldn't make too much of a difference in a person's life. But even the simple job as being like a garbage person, who's the person who's throwing away your garbage, you know, he's going to make a difference in your life. You know, you know, if the garbage is not being thrown out, it's going to be some create some problems. And those people are obviously not getting paid millions. You know, and I think what he's talking about, I think, is almost heading towards that direction. Yes, you know, there's that imbalance of all these athletes getting paid all these millions, and artists are just starving they're making like nothing and you know they're they're poor but if you look at different realms as far as artists can you know different type of artists i know martial artists they pretty much don't make much to like poor you know because there's really not much they could do with what they know but if you look at other type of artists like singers there's a lot of successful singers that are making lots of money singing. You know, they combine the singing with the dancing. You know, so if you look at artists like like a Michael Jackson, John Lennon, 
Beyonce, even Tupac and Kanye West and Jay Z. I mean, these are big name people that have made tons of money, millions of dollars from the industry. And the question is, are they truly artists? You know, how much of their art is being, you know, a part of their personal true expression from within and how much of their art is just a corruption by corp corporate America and just the system, you know, like who are the real artists out there? But aside from that aspect, they are creative of what they do. They're doing what they love. They're singing, they're dancing. They are considered artists and they make lots of money as well. So it's not just the athletes playing games that are making you know tons of money, but there are certain artists that are making lots of money as well. So you got those type of artists and then you also got the actors and actresses in movies who are making lots of money as well. Now, they're not athletes, you know, they're they're actors, they're actresses. So Denzel Washington, Will Smith, Brad Pitt, Leonardo DiCaprio, um, Jackie Chan, The Rock, um, Vin Diesel. You know, the list goes on and on of all these actors and actresses making tons of money just being in film. Now, are they considered artists? You know, I mean, they can be considered artists. They're not athletes, you know? So you got the athletic industry to focus on these games. You got the entertaining industry with these actors and actresses. You got the music industry with these singers slash dancers. Okay, so artists, there are artists out there that are making money, you know? It's not just the athletes making money. So, when you're talking about real arts, I think more specifically the person that wrote this message is more talking about the martial arts, like real martial artists opposed to just these athletes. Now the real martial artists, they are not really making any money, you know, because the real martial arts it's like they don't, the industry doesn't really need them. They don't need them be, to be in movies because they'll hire stunt doubles for certain things. They got the computers to do the, the work. You know, a lot of action movies are very popular. And you notice like these action movies, as far as these comic book action movies, are extremely popular. Like Spider-Man, Batman, they come up with so many series and it's like extremely popular but I think it's technology that's taken away the opportunity for martial artists to make money it's because of technology specifically like computer computer graphics and before the computer graphics it was stunt doubles but you know but now it's the computer graphics and the computer technologies have pretty much put the martial artists, you know, it's made the un martial artists unemployed in the movie industry. So now there's no longer opportunities for real martial artists to make it big in the movie industry because they just used computer technologies for that. So if there was no such thing as computer technologies and they really needed like a very talented, very skillful martial artists to play these action roles then the martial artists would have opportunities in this industry but they just don't because the, all they got to do is just use the, the computer to do everything that they need to do they don't need the actual actor to be able to do all these amazing physical feats and to actually be able to perform these techniques you know with proficiency and things of that like that Back in the day of Bruce Lee's time, they didn't have this computer technology. They didn't really even use stunt doubles because them editing the film was 
a challenge back then. You know, even with the remake, or not the remake, but the, the Game of Death, they didn't have, they weren't able to use Bruce Lee to finish the movie, but then they just got this actor that, to replace him, and you could clearly tell the major, like, it's just so poorly done that it's just a joke. But nowadays, even with Fast and Furious, you know, Paul Walker dies in the middle of the making of like the Fast and Furious 7 and they still, through the use of technology, able to like make the movie to make it as if he didn't even die. I mean, that's how well the editing has become. That's how well the technology has advanced. Back then, it was literally black and white television and they just started the colors and very poor editing, just very poor quality in the film. No computers, they're using wires to do all this, all these, you know, weird things. And it was just poor quality compared to the quality that they have now. But because of the technology, they're able to make these movies to be very entertaining to the audiences and just using the computers to do the work that they want to be done they're not depending on the artist anymore so the martial artists lost the ability to get into hollywood through their skills and with that any opportunities for real martial artists to thrive and succeed in this type of industry it's is non-existent you know it's it's almost like that's the only thing that they had you know it's, it's, it's similar to like these gymnasts, you know, we just had the Rio, the, the Olympics Rio 2016. They got these amazing gymnasts that are really good at what they do, right? Like the Lori Hernandez or whatever, and then they had the swimmers, and then they had um, Simone Biles, and then they had this dancing with the stars or whatever. They had Lori Hernandez in there, they had the swimmer in there, and like, it's like they're trying to find opportunities. They got these amazing skill sets, that the things that they could do physically, but they're trying to look for opportunities out there, but what type of opportunities are they going to get? Like even in Hollywood, if they're making a movie about a gymnast, they don't really need a real gymnast to play the actor. Because there is a movie called The Peaceful Warrior, which is a movie about a gymnast. And the main, the main person that's starring in the movie is not even a gymnast. They had a stunt double do all the work. And it was clear, you know, every time that they're doing all the hard, hard techniques and all that, they would never show the person's face. And it's just a real gymnast is just in the background doing all the work. And then they're just putting the face of the main actor as if he's the person doing all the work when he's not and it's the same thing that they did with that movie um, Black Swan I mean the the main actress she wasn't she's not a real ballet dancer so then they had a real ballet dancer be her stunt double doing all the work and then she the main actress didn't know what didn't really know it all didn't know that much but yet she takes all the credit. So it's like these real gymnasts, these real ballet dancers, these real martial artists, they're just being used for what they could be used for. And they're not really be, they're not in the limelight. They're just being used for what they could be used for just for the production of the movie. And the people that are getting the credit are the main stars, actors of the movies, of whom don't really truly you know, possess the skills of what is being portrayed. So in these comic book movies, you got like Batman and Spider-Man, these are not 
these people, these actors that are playing these roles are not truly gifted in the martial arts. They're just using technology to do all this amazing things. And then that's what's selling. So the martial artist is not, they don't, they don't need the martial artist. You know, and that's the thing that is a sad thing, you know, because nowadays there could be lots of people as talented as Bruce Lee was or even more talented in the martial arts, but they're not allowed to even be accepted into Hollywood because Hollywood is saying we don't need your skills. You're basically they're saying your skills are outdated. We don't need that. We got the computers to do all the work, so we don't need you for that. So it's kind of like the cashier who's doing the cashier work, but then they end up just getting a machine to self-checkout, and they're just like, well, we don't need you as a cashier anymore. We're just going to have them use this machine, and they'll just check themselves out, and now you're out of a job. And that's kind of what the martial artist is like. They're not needed anymore in film. And if you think about it, without film, how else can a real martial artist make it big? So if, they're, if they have no opportunities in film in Hollywood, they have no opportunities in the music industry because, there's nothing, because music is it's a verbal expression. It's not a physical expression. So no music industry, no film industry. Like, what else can they do? So then a lot of these martial artists, they, um, they would put limitations upon their art in order to get into the sport industry in order to gain that attention and fame. And that's what a lot of martial artists have done in order to get into the Olympics with because you got martial artists say like Ronda Rousey got into the Olympics and I think she won like second place in judo or something like that so a martial artist will end up a lot of these martial artists end up putting limitations upon their study of the arts in order to try to make it big in the sports and once you start putting those limitations on yourself then you become more of an athlete of your sport opposed to an artist of your, of your craft. So the people that go into the Olympics from Taekwondo to Judo to wrestling, whatever the sport is, they've changed from an artist to an athlete to make it big within the Olympics. And then you got these athletes or these martial artists that might just completely stop you know putting limit they say they start putting limitations on themselves so then and then they end up getting into boxing or wrestling or cage fighting or muay thai or whatever is you know popular within the industry of the sports so that's what's going on you know a lot of martial artists are going into the sports to try to get that attention and fame and even just today, I saw a trailer about Kickboxer, Revenge, and Jean-Claude Van Damme is in there. And then there's GSP in there, and some bunch of random people. So it's like GSP's getting roles in Hollywood because of the fame that he's established in the cage. And same thing with... Um, you know, other people in the cage, like Randy Culture, whatever his name is, he got fame in the cage and then he got opportunities in Hollywood. Kung Lee got fame in the cage, or first Kung Lee got fame in San Sao, and then he got fame in the cage, and then he got, then he, that allowed him opportunities in Hollywood. So it's like the martial artists nowadays, they end up having to end up going into the cage in order to get a, a green light to get into Hollywood. You know, Bruce Lee, so it's like this. Bruce Lee couldn't get into Hollywood, so he went to Hong Kong, and then finally 
because he went to Hong Kong, they gave him the green light to get into Hollywood. Even um, Ronda Rousey, she went into the Olympics, went into the cage, got the fame in the cage, and then she got the green light to go into Hollywood. So what happens, like a martial artist starts off here, and then a lot of them get into, into the cage to get the green light to go to Hollywood. Bruce Lee had to go to Hong Kong, and then he went to the Hollywood. So, that's what's going on. That's why you don't see many talented, real martial artists out there. Because a lot of them end up just being like, you know what, this is just getting me nowhere. I'm not making any money. I'm just going to go become a sport fighter so that I can have more opportunities. I mean, I mean, the appeal is there. I mean, look at Floyd Mayweather making millions of dollars being a boxer. So you have the option of either being poor as a real martial artist or potentially being rich by having at least a small opportunity to make it big in the combat sport industry. I think a lot of people, they like to dream. They want to at least feel that they have at least a chance of making it big. Like I think that's the, I mean that's the same reason why people play the lottery. Is they want to just they just want to at least give themselves hope that one day they'll be rich. Even though the chances of them winning the lottery is like slim to none. But they still want to play the lottery just to have that hope. And I think a lot of people are like that when it comes to martial arts it's like they don't want to practice the real martial arts because there's no there's absolutely no hope in making it big because there's no Hollywood there's nothing but if they if they give up being real martial artists and they just become like say just a boxer at least they're just like well at least I have a chance of being the next Mayweather. Even though I will never will be, at least it might happen because at least I'm trying. And I think that's why a lot of people don't practice the real martial arts is because they just want some hope that they could maybe one day make it big. Even though the, the everything stacked against them. Like they can't just practice the arts for the pure joy of practicing. They have to be striving after something. And that's what I see. You know, and but this is what I think I wanted to bring up is the whole YouTube is that's an opportunity for me I feel for martial artists real martial artists to have hope it's like the boxers have the hope of being the next wave Mayweather but the real martial artist has the hope of being the next YouTube sensation like, he's not a martial artist, but I know he's famous on YouTube. The guy, the six-pack apps guy, the Michael Chang dude. You know, I don't really, I don't watch his videos, but I know he's famous because he's everywhere. And that already, that's kind of what I'm talking about. It's like, there's a lot of artists out there. It's kind of like the real artist that's a great singer, a great dancer. And then they go to American Idol and they make it big, which it's happened a lot. 
And that YouTube is kind of like that for martial arts where, you know, you, you're a real martial artist. There's no opportunities in Hollywood at all because it's just non-existent because the computers have taken away the opportunity. But at least there's the YouTube where if you're on there, there's at least a chance. More than likely, you won't make it big. You won't become a sensation. But at least there is the potential. I mean, because you look at the Michael Chang, and he's relatively very famous on YouTube. And even some of the martial art people that are, you know, that I've seen that have like a lot of subscribers, like there's that Quan Kicker dude, there's um, the Master Wong guy, um, there's, you know, there's people on YouTube that have, there's that one dude that makes fun of the martial arts, that white guy, I don't know his name. But he just makes a parody of the martial arts and he's gained a decent amount of attention and fame. So, I mean, you see it before your eyes, like regular people doing regular things, making, getting attention, getting fame from YouTube. Martial artists are no martial artists, but just an artist. Doesn't matter if you're a martial artist, but just being an artist or just a creator. Even if you don't even create great content, somehow, some way, sometimes, whatever you do can become viral, and then you become the next sensation. So, YouTube has become the opportunity for artists in which to give them some hope. Real artists. Not just, you know, you know, athletes or whatever the case may be, or sport people. So that's what I see. Real martial artists, there's going to be a lot of real martial artists that just give up the martial arts to become fighters so they could try to make it big in sport and become the next Mayweather or the next great sensational cage fighter. Some martial artists will still try to go towards Hollywood, but that opportunity is just not even existent in my eyes. And then some martial artists will go towards YouTube for that hope. So either category you go to, there's some hope. If you head towards Hollywood as a real martial artist, you're still retaining the integrity of the martial arts because you're just trying to get into film. If you, if you, if you practice real martial arts and then you head towards becoming a combat sport fighter, then you've given up the integrity of the martial arts. You're no longer representing the real martial arts, but you become a fighter. You know, your title has changed. If you head towards YouTube, you still retain the integrity of the martial arts. You're just, you're being true to the arts. So that is what I see is going on with the whole martial arts thing. Those are the options that you have. Some martial artists out there that practice the real they might not, they just don't care, they, or they, just, they either don't care or they just give up hope or whatever. They just, they're not unconcerned about trying to make it quote unquote big through the martial arts. They just practice the martial arts because they love it and then they just go on about their day, doing their everyday things. You know, going to work, taking care of the kids, making money hanging out with friends. Martial arts is just a part of their life. They're not trying to gain fame or money out of it or attention. It's just their life. 
you know, just kind of like maybe like people that might believe in God and then they go to church all the time, but they're not trying to make f get famous or make money off of it. They're just doing it because it's in them to do it. And that's there's people out there like that with the martial arts. They just love the martial arts. They don't want to join tournaments to become fighters. They don't care to be in Hollywood. They don't care to be on YouTube. They don't go to tournaments. You know, they, they just train because they love to train. And this is part of who they are. So there's those types of people out there too. You know, so I think in order to support real artists out there, I guess what I'm what I'm basically saying is that like rather than putting so much focus on sport fighters and athletes, we could maybe give more support to people on YouTube, you know. Um that are trying to make a difference in what they do and when you support them and when you support more of the real artists out there real people and you then it you know you draw less attention you give less attention to these professional athletes then it just makes the the art art the art community stronger you know then the money becomes more equally distributed I mean, rather than having, you know, a sport fighter like Mayweather making like $500 million in one boxing match, okay, why don't we just like give him $400 million and then give the rest of $100 million to the YouTube community with real artists? You know, so then it's more of like an equal distribution of wealth. And then... There's an appreciation for sport fighters, which there, there always has been and always will be. But then there's also a lot of appreciation for real artists that don't fight. And then they, make, they can make money too. I mean, that to me is fair. You know, I don't think, you know, I don't think that the starving artists out there, it's fair for them to make absolutely nothing doing what they love. And then the corrupted artist out there who has become a sport fighter is making like so much money that he can't even, like, there's, he doesn't even know what to do with it because he has so much money. You know, it just doesn't make, it just doesn't make sense to me, you know. You know, I think that, but we as people can make that decision. Like, we don't need to watch and give attention to these fighters. We could give attention to the real artists out there that are doing positive and good things by supporting them. You know, you know, like the people on the YouTube, for example. You know what I mean? Like the real artists on YouTube. Like the more that we support the real artists, then it's going to be better for all of us because we're more likely to make it big on YouTube than we ever will be, you know, being the next fighter or the next famous actor in Hollywood. You know, it's like the opportunities are there. It's like nobody's preventing us from making our own videos and uploading our own videos to share a part of our art. And then we have all these artists supporting each other. And then it's almost like we're so busy supporting each other that we've forgotten about the industry. And then now these athletes aren't getting paid as much as they're getting paid anymore. Everything's circulating. All the attention's circulating in YouTube now. And people are, you know, these corporations are reaching out to regular YouTube people to get sponsorship or whatever the case may be or to receive sponsorship or whatever and then the YouTube community keeps growing the real artists keep growing and that's essentially what YouTube was meant to represent from the very beginning as far as my understanding it's just a place for real artists like real creators like not this fake stuff that, you're, that we're so used to seeing 
in mass media, like these commercials and these movies and everything's just so, like, so advertised and so unreal and just so, like, there's no heart in it. It's just all just business. Every, everything's just selling you things. Like, Michael Jordan never drinks Coke, and then all of a sudden, you know, he's promoting Coke because they give him, like, $10 billion to do it. Michael Jackson never drinks Pepsi, but then they pay him a couple million, $10 million or whatever, and then now he's promoting Pepsi. I mean, it's just, everything is just so, like, it's not real. It's just so false, you know, like, you know, fake superheroes with the, com you know, computers doing all the, all the work to make it seem like they're super strong, but then, or whatever. But then it's like the real people that are really, really strong in real life. Like they're on YouTube, you know what I'm saying? They're just doing their thing, working out in the gym. And there's that potential, you know? Like we're all regular people. And if we stop putting the people in the industry at, on, on a pedestal, then we take away their power in order to equally distribute that power to the people. You know, like the people of YouTube, like the people like me, the people like you, like regular people helping regular people helping regular people make money. I mean, it'd be great if all YouTube artists can make, say, hypothetically, I don't know, $100,000 a year each. And then everybody is enjoying life, doing what they love, expressing who they are, and making money. Opposed to everybody idolizing, oh, Floyd Mayweather, okay, take all our money. We're just going to watch you box, and we're going to pay you millions and millions of dollars just to watch you box rather than just like hey you know creating our own boxing videos our own sparring videos with our friends and family or whoever and then making money from that while we support our friends and family that are making their videos and they're making money off of us supporting them that to me would be a beautiful world and it's kind of like what's going on with Facebook, but rather than Facebook getting all the money and not giving anything to anybody, like they're actually like paying you to upload photos, paying you to make videos. And then all of a sudden, you don't even have to go to work anymore because you're all you got to do is just post on Facebook and then now you're making money sharing with your loved one your photos, your videos. And then now you're making money doing things that you normally do for free anyway. Like that's the type of world that I feel that we should live in. Like we should make that happen. We shouldn't be like paying these actors, these actresses, these, these, these athletes, these fighters, millions and millions and millions of dollars just to do something ins ins insignificant. It's not even important. It's just... Like, the wealth is just not distributed evenly, you know, or it doesn't have to be necessarily evenly, but it's just at least gives some opportunities, more opportunities for real artists out there, not just real martial artists, but just real artists to just do what they love and then make some money from it, you know, and we the people have to support that and do that because essentially we are the ones we are the reason why these athletes and these actresses and actors are making so much money is because we are allowing them to but if we put our attention to each other and not them then we create our own community and then our own way of generating revenue for each other so it's nice if you as a YouTube creator, as a YouTube artist, you can make 2000 a month and then your fellow YouTube 
artist is also making 2000 a month. Everybody's making some money doing what they love. You don't necessarily have to be super duper talented, but it's just, hey, you know, we're all talented in our own ways. And, you know, we're real people. You know, and that's what I, I, I support. You know, and I'm at least thankful to be back. Hopefully, hopefully I don't get booted off again. But it was discouraging to be away for over a year or over a year and a half. Like, it's like, then my hope was completely gone. You know, it's like, obviously, the Hollywood thing isn't going to happen for me, you know. And then the sport fighting thing, it goes against my values. All I had was the YouTube, and they even took that away from me. And I'm just like, you know what? What do I have now? And then it's just like, well, then I just got to do what I do on a, on a direct individual level, building um, a community of following through the people that I interact with on a daily basis. But I'm thankful for the, the, the opportunities that YouTube can provide for artists. And I wish Facebook would do the same, you know, maybe one day. Um, even I think I've heard they got this website called Tumblr where you share photos and I've heard that they might start allowing people to make money from sharing photos. I feel that if these industries like Google, YouTube, Facebook, if they can have the heart to share some of their wealth with the, the people who are making their companies super duper rich, it just makes this world a better place. You know, I really don't feel that we should be idolizing these people that are placed in pedestals. I think that we should all recognize and realize that we are all unique people and we should support one another to do what we love to do. Because I feel that there's a lot of people out there that don't truly want to be fighters. They want to be artists, but they just want to make some money. But then there's no opportunities for artists to make money, so they're like, you know what? Fuck it. Let me just become a fighter then. I feel that there's, there's a lot of people out there that just want to be artists. And if there's just more opportunities out there for real artists to make money, there would be less fighters out there because... Because they wouldn't have to do that in order to make money. They wouldn't have to get dirty like that. You know, so... That's what I see. You know, the more that we open our eyes, the more that we support one another, the better it is for this world, you know. And the support that I get, I'm thankful for. And I, I want to grow. And hopefully I do. And if I grow, then maybe I can be, you know, I could be something like a facilitator of opportunities. Just like Dana White, Donna White is a facilitator for opportunities for fighters to make it famous. You know, he's the one who's there to be like, I choose you and I'll make you famous. I'll put you in that cage and you'll be famous because of me. And Bruce Lee was a facilitator, you know. You know, I got into Hollywood, so now I'll give you an opportunity and I'll help you build your name, your fame through me. So because of Bruce Lee, 
you know, then it's Danny, it's, people know about Danny Asano because of Bruce Lee, they know about Wing Chun because of Bruce Lee, they know about Bob Wall because of Bruce Lee, they know about Jim Kelly because of Bruce Lee, they know about, you know, Chuck Norris, they, they know about Kareem Abdul Jabbar. I mean, because of Bruce Lee, he's, been, he's provided a lot of people opportunities to share a part of themselves, their art to the world. And if somebody makes it big on YouTube, they could provide, they become a, a facilitator to provide opportunities for other unknown artists to eventually become known and build their own name, their own reputation, brand themselves, make money for themselves. So to me, there's hope for real artists out there. Not just real martial artists, but there's hope, you know, like it can happen because you see it happening right before your eyes. You know, like these people that are famous on YouTube, before the invention of YouTube, they weren't famous, but then they got into YouTube and then now people know who they are. And YouTube, as long as you follow their guidelines, their community guidelines, you could upload, you could, you could create, you could share. But it's not the same in Hollywood. You can't just go into Hollywood and start making movies. No, like, you know, it's, it's, it's for a selected crowd of people with heavy restrictions. So I'm thankful that there is a YouTube. I think that YouTube can be you know, probably like the last option, the only option for real martial artists to try to build a name for themselves, build a following. Other than that, if you can't, if there's no YouTube, the real martial artists have no choice but to just do it within their own community. You know, create their own club, create their own school, create their own business to uh, build themselves up to promote the real martial arts. But Hollywood's out of the question and jumping in the cage is just, you know, that's not, that's not the real martial arts. So that's not an option, you know. But those are my thoughts on it. And um, I hope that we just all support each other. Because really, we're all going to benefit if we support each other rather than destroy each other, which is kind of what happened in the past with my channel. You know, we got all these, you know, hatred going back and forth, all these arguments. They shut me down, I shut them down, and all our channels are gone, and it's just, we're destroying each other. But we shouldn't do that, you know, all YouTube people, if we support each other, and we make money together, that's a beautiful thing. But if we destroy each other, then who's succeeding? It's like us shooting and killing each other. Like I, I shoot, you shoot, and then we kill each other. We both die. It's just it's ridiculous. It's stupid. Everybody on YouTube, we should support each other. Because I feel the real arts are on YouTube. And even the people on the pedestals in Hollywood, in the music industry, they even have to find a way to get on YouTube because they know that's where all the people are. You know, and if they don't, if we banned commercial artists from getting into YouTube, they wouldn't be as powerful than they are. So they know that the YouTube, the people, 
is where the power is. The reason why they're on the pedestal is because we put them there. But if we come to realization, like, no, nah, like, we're not going to put you guys in a pedestal. We're going to make money amongst our own community. Then that's when this world can really be a better place. I mean, imagine a world where you don't even have to go to work. You just post videos on YouTube and then that's paying all your bills. Imagine that. I mean, that's a beautiful world right there where we could just create content and make money from our content. That's a beautiful world. And I hope to one day make that world, that beautiful world, a reality. Not just for myself, but just for everybody. Because I see so many people miserably going to work, doing stuff that they don't want to do. But if we could all do stuff that we love to do, then everybody's going to be happy. And I think that's what we need to support. You know, because... Not all of us are going to be the next Floyd Mayweather. Just like not all of us are going to be the President of the United States. There's only one person that could be the President of the United States out of over 7 billion people. You're not going to be the President. So stop even focusing on that. Just focus on being yourself and find a way to generate income being yourself. And that's what, to me, real martial arts is all about. Is just being yourself. And that's what I promote.